A rather convincing game one victory for the Golden State Warriors. The only one by 25 points. Dub Nation, so far so good. <laughs> And I have a talent with me today, a national superstar on my favorite two channels or two shows, whatever you want to call it, NBA on TNT, NBA TV. Kristen Ledlow joins me next. This is Locked On Warriors. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts. And today's episode is brought to you by Sakara Nutrition. Sakara is a wellness company anchored in food as medicine on a mission to nourish. Go to sakara.com slash locked on 20 or enter code locked on 20 for 20% off at checkout. You can follow Kristen Ledlow on Twitter at Kristen Ledlow. Kristen, it is such a pleasure to have you on the show. How are you this morning? And give us your first reaction to last night's game one of the Western Conference Finals. I'm good. First, my reaction to that intro, that is far more than I deserve, especially considering I'm insisting on keeping the camera off because coming from a noon facial and mothering a one-year-old all morning uh, is not exactly going to present as national superstar you've introduced me as. (laughs) But last night, oh man, First, so much fun to watch. It's so much fun to see exciting basketball back in the Bay, the way that I've remembered it. My career has coincided with the Warriors' rise, and it's so exciting to see it happening again, to see those fans lose their minds over Steph Curry and everybody else, the way that they used to. It's just I'm going to say exciting probably far too many times in this podcast because that's what it felt like watching it last night. Um, But start to finish, it's just a dominant win. It's it's Mm -hmm. easy to overreact when a game in a series tilts as far in one team's favor as that one seemed to. But if we didn't overreact overreact too much to a 50-something point deficit at one point we probably shouldn't overreact too much to this one right i, I would yeah it depends i mean i've been, t- I've been telling people and, and look jared greenberg your colleague was on here a couple weeks ago and, I, and he looked at me kind of crazy but also was really cool about it he kind of understood my position this entire postseason has been the grizzlies are going to be the toughest out for these golden state warriors i consider them to be the second best team in the postseason i know i sound crazy um i don't think i'm gonna sound crazy when the postseason is over do you think i'm crazy and Oh, and, and I guess uh, following up with that, what is your anticipation for game two? How do you think Dallas is going to react? At this point, no. I don't think that you are crazy for having considered the Grizzlies their toughest out. I thought from the start it would be the Suns, and I mm. still don't quite know what to make of that game seven. So we probably don't have time to unpack all that is there. Uh, but no, I, I don't think you're crazy at all for, for thinking that that was likely going to be their toughest series. And from here on out, you're looking at finals or bust. Yeah. Um, looking ahead to game two, I, I think... Likely, the Mavs will make the significant adjustments they made in both their first and second series uh, where they did lose (laughs) the way that they did. They did face deficits the way that they did, and then they came back and not only won games, but they won the series. So Mm. I I do think that game two will likely be a little bit closer, even considering that Dallas did not have home court advantage in the last round, nor in this one. So they had to go straight from Phoenix to the Bay. They haven't had a chance really to even catch their breaths from a game seven. So I do think that there will be significant adjustments made and likely a closer game two. But I I don't, I've said since 2015, it's just tough to beat the Warriors in front of yes. their home crowd. They have one of, there's a reason it's called home court advantage, but not in every home is it a significant advantage. And in the Bay, it is. So yeah, I, I do expect this series to go up 2-0. Um, but I do think that game two will be a little closer. Of course. I mean, Luca, I, I don't doubt Luca's greatness. This 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 individual is going to be an all-timer when all said and done, I think. Um, and the Suns, I know, I know the regular season record, I think, threw a lot of people off. I, like I always tell people when you look at the Suns, 
And their number one scoring option is Devin Booker. That's a foregone conclusion. But when you look at it, their second best scoring option was a 37-year-old player who's probably past his prime. And that's one of the reasons why I just, they didn't scare me that much. I, you know, the, the Maverick, I mean, the Grizzlies were a whole other story. You talked about Chase Center. You talked about that crowd. You could, you could just through the television screen, feel the energy, hear the noise. You've been a courtside reporter for a long time. You covered some of those great warrior teams when they were playing across the Bay uh, in Oakland at Oracle. And especially the post game, you, you saw those crowds behind the TNT crew <laughs> just yelling and chanting. Um, what were your th- I mean, like, like, is there a similarity there? How did you feel watching that? Like, did it remind you of, of the days when you were here in Oakland uh, covering the team? Did it, were there differences? What were your feelings yeah. on that? Yes, and it's so much fun to see. I don't, this is going to sound like it's unrelated, but it's not. Do you watch This Is Us or have you ever watched This Is Us? I have. My wife loves that show, so I've watched it with her, yes. Okay, okay. So you know how... I believe it's the Steelers is their team that they somewhat jokingly, but not so much. They, they, they jokingly say that because this team is good, kind of everything that is good in their lives stems from the Steelers. Yeah. That's my life with the Warriors. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I, I have. It. Well, okay. So I have often said that about the Warriors, not because I was a Warriors fan, but because during that stretch in 2015, 16, 17, 18, when they were so good, I met, fell in love with a man who was living in the Bay at the time. We are now married and have a one-year-old. And really the only reason that all of that happened the way it did is because the Warriors were as good as they were. I I actually told Steph Curry in a sit-down interview a couple of years ago, a few years ago, when my husband and I were set to get married. And he was like, should I be in this wedding? Like, I feel like this has happened because of me. Like, it's happened because you're out here every other week. And (laughs) so (laughs) I credit all that is good in my life now because the Warriors were as good as they were for those many years. And so to sit on my couch last night with my husband, with our one-year-old already tucked in bed, and to watch it happen the way that it did, it almost brought tears to my eyes because, yes, some of my very favorite memories covering the game of basketball are right there, not exactly in that building, but right there in that area covering that team. And it was so sweet to see it all happening again knowing that the only reason I'm not there is because I picked to be off the road this season as I do have a one-year-old that stemmed from again I'm crediting the Warriors maybe a little too much but from all of those years of them being so good and my having to be there it was so sweet to see it again oh that's awesome and I've been wondering where you've been Uh, I, I your Instagram page kind of reveals uh, who your husband is. And I want to congratulate you tremendously on, on your family and your baby. I saw the <laughs> pictures. Adorable. Uh, d- tell the, tell the, the world, you. if you don't mind, like, how did you meet your husband while yeah. you were here? That, I did not know that part of it. So I'd love to hear that. Right. I, I, yeah. So it was a mutual friend of ours uh, was working as a principal in a school in downtown Hayward. Okay. And she asked me to come and speak to one of their morning services, just kind of speak to uh, the students while I was out there covering the Warriors during one of their playoff runs several years back. I couldn't remember when it was, but it was certainly at the height of all of it, 2000, maybe 16 or 17, 15, yeah, and all tough. That, they all, all that, start yeah. to run together. Seasons yeah, yeah. like <laughs> theirs all start to run together. <laughs> and my husband was working at the time, as you know, then if you've if you've seen him online, uh, he's a musician and he was working a few mornings a week at that school teaching music. And wow. we met for the first time that day. And uh, at, again, I could, I guess I could just fast forward to, to where we are now, but we met the first time that day and I was set to come back a couple of weeks later because again the warriors were really good (laughs) and i mentioned that i had an extra ticket for a game i wasn't covering they were playing it was it was maybe a back-to-back and i was doing sidelines for the tnt game but there was either a night before or the night after that they were playing that i wasn't working and i mentioned that i had uh an extra ticket and i don't think that he really understood that i would what i was getting at like hey you know like you and i should go and so he's like oh that sounds so fun who all is coming and so when he said who all is coming I'm like 
oh, I need to turn this into a group thing. And so I go back to the Warriors and I ask for several extra tickets, again, at the height of them being as good as they are, because I didn't want my now husband to think that I was being too forward. So I got like six tickets and invited everyone that we knew out there uh, to come. So we, we kind of called that our unofficial first date because I understood it to be and he didn't. Right. Uh, <laughs> but that was the way it sort of unfolded. <laughs> Bravo. And I'm guessing the greatness that is Raymond Ritter took care of you like he does everyone. I, I He absolutely me. did. I should have just told you from the get go. It was okay, all on right. Raymond. And then it was funny yeah, to watch like my relationship kind of unfold. And then ultimately I'm engaged and I'm out there covering games and then I'm married and I'm out there covering games and then I get pregnant. And I, it, it's just so funny to know that that was the way it went because it was the day of that I'm like, Oh, I need to turn this into a group thing. And he was the one who made sure that I ended up with six tickets instead of two. <laughs> He's a legend. I, and, and, you know, I've been working in the media for over 20 years, uh, and I've never to this day met anyone even close to his professionalism. No, he this, you is know, his... the best. Yep, he is the best there is. And I would say he sets the bar, but like that's unfair yes. to everybody else because it's not a bar that anyone can reach. He is just the best there is. That is very true. I got to pay some bills real quick, Kristen. Uh, just stick around. I'll be back with you in just a moment. Uh, got to tell the listeners first about Truebill, a fantastic way for people to save money. Um, look, I'm guessing most of you listening or watching are fully aware that you can easily forget you subscribe to things. You could easily forget that you're paying for bills without even being aware of it. And Truebill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't need, want, or simply forget about. On average, people save up to $720 a year with Truebill. I've saved over a thousand just because I forgot about a second Netflix account. I forgot about subscriptions that I just didn't even realize I did on my Amazon shopping cart. And it saved me a ton of money. Don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash locked on NBA. Go right now. Truebill.com slash locked on NBA could save you thousands a year. And today's episode is also brought to you by, of course, Build Bar, a longtime sponsor, the yummy protein bars that only have a fraction of the sugar that candy bars have. Your average candy bar has 30 grams of sugar. Sugar is horrible for you. Protein in moderation, great for you. And protein, a Build Bar typically has 17 grams of protein. That's the reason why I even had one of our, our YouTube listeners comment that he eats these late at night when he has the munchies so he doesn't gain weight and put bad things in his body when he goes back to sleep. They're incredible. They taste great. They're covered in 100% real chocolate. Go to built.com, use the promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your order. Use the promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts. Not to mention the YouTube show. And Kristen Ledlow joins me. I am ecstatic right now. You can follow her on Twitter at Kristen Ledlow. And by the way, and I mean this it, it, with the utmost respect. When we, we briefly met one time at Oracle Arena, and you have really unusual eyes in the best way possible. Like, you really lock in. <laughs> I was like, wow, you don't do that every day. So so, so your your husband's a lucky man. Kudos. Congratulations. <laughs> that is incredible. Uh, Thank you. That is so kind. Thank you. I don't mind saying that. I, was, I mean, just all respect saying that. Um, uh, all respect. Your colleague, the Bay Area is, is is enamored, and this has been a big mystery for me to me for a long time because I can't tell if it's a bit, I can't tell if there's genuineness to this. But your colleague Charles Barkley, I already know where you're love, going with this. Of course, of course, yeah. right? you're, you're, I'm, you're, you would not be in a position if you're not highly intelligent. Why, in your opinion, I mean, I, I, I love the timing of this, having someone from my two favorite either shows or channels, NBA on TNT, where I. Imagine at some point you're going to be back on the road uh, doing courtside reporting. You're also on NBA TV regularly, uh, my my favorite channel on TV. Why does Charles hate the Warriors so much? I mean, the theory and the and the San Francisco Bay Area. I mean, he literally said he <laughs> hates San Francisco. Uh, you know, I, I can't tell if it's a bit or if it's real, if it's a little bit of both. What is your theory, or maybe if you know the truth, why does Charles <laughs> hate the Warriors and the Bay Area so much? 
<laughs> oh goodness. I will say my first season, this is I I've been working with Turner Sports for almost 10 years wow. and I started during the stretch that the San Antonio Spurs were really great. And you may yeah. remember he made similar if not significantly worse comments about San Antonio and, the gen and those gen who yes. reside there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So by no means do I excuse it, but do I expect it? Yes. I don't think that anything that he does is part of some prepared or planned bit, but okay. I do think he loves to see the reaction. So last night for him to hear over and over and over Barkley so sucks from just a <laughs> sea of people <laughs> screaming it to him, he is the only one who would turn around and say you know what y'all suck too yeah <laughs> and for that we love him but yes. i do not know exactly what it is i will i'll find out i will make that my mission to find out and report back please do i mean i mean we have our, our contact information please let me know because that is the big mystery i'm generally <laughs> baffled i can't I can't tell if it's like he just has a disdain for the Warriors style, you know, predominantly being a jump shooting team. I've heard speculation yeah. when he was a player, he hated that like everywhere closed here at 2 a.m. sharp and there was no nightlife. I, I, I have no idea, but I'm perplexed because I love Chuck but so it, much. And it dates back also. It dates yes. back because I also, I distinctly remember the maybe 2018 teen conference finals it was warriors rockets am yeah. i right in when yeah. that would have been Game and seven, yeah. he seven, kept saying yeah he kept saying over and over and over this is going to be a rocket sweep it's going to be yes. a rocket sweep and so i saw an opportunity because justin timberlake was on tour at the time and he is my all-time favorite has been since i was in second grade um he was touring and he was going to be in houston what would have been the night before a game five. And okay. so again, seeing the opportunity and knowing that Charles knows him, I said, how about this? If the Warriors win even one game, I'm not even talking about the series, even one game, and we have to go back to Houston for game five, you got to buy tickets to see Justin Timberlake. And he was like, if the Warriors win even one of these games in this series, I'll buy a whole box of Justin Timberlake tickets and every single one of y'all can come. And sure enough, what happened? The Warriors not only won a game, they won the series. And guess who was watching Justin Timberlake the night before game five? Me and everybody that works with us. <laughs> I, is it safe to say that you have your dream job? Like, I, I, I feel like I'm a, like my day job is I'm a professor. I love academia. I also love doing this. But if there's ever a media job that can get me back out to, into the media field full time, I would say it's if NBA on TNT or NBA TV said, hey, you want to be a producer? You want to be a, a part time? Whatever the, the job would be. I think that would be the only job that would convince me to leave academia on a full time basis. Uh, do you love the job there? Is it is it really as amazing as it looks? Because I just see genuineness. I see just spontaneity. I see a family uh, environment. Well, yeah, what, what is it like working there? Is it as, as great yeah, as it's I, It's like, I, I could describe it as a dream job, but like a dream job is something you could have realistically dreamt. And it, it's so far above and beyond anything that I would have thought was possible for myself I, when I set out to, to work in or around the game of basketball. It's, I say so often, like, what an unbelievable gift to work a job I like with people I love. And every single thing that you see on television is exactly as it is presented. It is a job we all really like alongside people we all really love. Oh, and also mm. when they are like when they argue and they go back and forth, that's yes. genuine also. That's yeah, not yeah. It. like that they argue just as much behind the scenes as well. <laughs> but it's like brotherly love, right? Like the bickering is just kind of like how a family yes. would bicker. That's fair to say. That's, it's incre that's incredible. That is exactly the way <laughs> the perfect way to describe it. Yes. That's, that's incredible. Congratulations, Kristen. I if you don't mind, I, I just have a one minute commercial read and then I want to finish up by learning about your background. I'm sure the audience would love it. Um, you know, I always Yeah, let's do it. in sports and, and I try to tell the listeners like, you know, how individuals get to where they are. Uh so so real quick, I want to talk about Sakara, uh, a, a new sponsor here. Uh, with Locked On. They're a wellness company anchored in food as medicine on a mission to nourish your body through the power of plants. You know, it's really, it's basically a meal program that's plant-driven. 
Uh, their neutrally, nutritionally designed chef crafted breakfast, lunch, and dinners are made with powerful plant rich ingredients. It helps boost your energy, supports your digestion, curb your sugar cravings, and gets your skin glowing. And right now, Sakara is offering our listeners 20% off their first order when they go to sakara.com slash locked on 20 or enter the code locked on 20 at checkout. That's Sakara, S A K A R A dot com slash locked on 20 to get 20% off your first order, sakara.com slash locked on 20. You are locked on warriors, your daily golden state warriors podcast, part of the locked on podcast network, your team every day. Thank you for making locked on warriors. Your first listen every day. We're free and available. We're Ever you get podcasts, Kristen Ledlow is free and available on Twitter at Kristen Ledlow. Tell us about your background. I, I would love to know how you uh, you rose to the ranks and have become a very prestigious media member uh, in the NBA, if not the entire sporting world. Ah, uh, thank you. Um, I did not necessarily set out to work in media. I set out to work in the game of basketball. Okay, uh, I started playing basketball when I was very little. Uh, well, I guess I should say very young. I've never been that little. I was nearly six feet tall by the time I was 12. So it was a natural fit. Um, and I knew I wanted to work in or around the game. As I started in general communication in college, uh, I actually started calling the men's games on our local broadcast after playing in the women's games and, and just fell in love with the broadcast medium, uh, whatever it, it, it may have been. And I started in local news, my hometown uh, in Tallahassee. And I mean like the nice. actual local news, like when you turn on the, the local news and they're like, this is the pet of the week. And it's like a local anchor holding a ferret. That that's the kind of stuff that I did, um, and I'm sure that those clips are available somewhere on the World Wide Web. But as I was working in local news, I reached out to the local ESPN radio affiliate, and they were covering the Florida State football team, of course. And I offered to be their sideline reporter for those broadcasts, and they said, you know, it's not really in the budget for us to hire anybody right now, but. If you would like to work directly for our sponsor, we will pay you in Applebee's gift cards. And I am not kidding. My first job as a sideline reporter was for the Florida State football team, and I was paid in Applebee's gift cards. Which at the time, when you're like 22, 23, and you're not only trying to build a career for yourself, but thinking like, well, you know, appetizers are half off after 10, and at least I can get a margarita that's covered after this game. Right. It's not a bad gig. Uh, I would not recommend agreeing to work where you are paid in Applebee's gift cards for the record. Um, but they were really good at that point. Uh, the Florida state football team was. And so I started, um, accepting, uh, kind of guest hits on, on, on radio shows and podcasts as someone who was, you know, around the team uh, most of every day during the week and then on the weekends as well. And that segued into an offer from the Scout website, which covered recruiting in both the SEC and ACC, both in football and in basketball. And that was my initial move to Atlanta was to, to cover recruiting in the Southeast. Um, from there, I started working in local radio here too, and was working on a morning show alongside Rick Kamla, who was also one of our hosts on NBA TV. And he was the oh. one who told me that NBA TV was looking at reviving NBA inside stuff and that Grant Hill had signed on. And I was like, yes. you just got to get me in the building because I want to meet Grant Hill. Like, I just want to hug him, you know, and it's like, okay, well, you can't hug him. And so I, that did happen. I, I, I went in for an audition uh, alongside Grant uh, for inside stuff and and it really did not that day cross my mind that like 10 years later you and I would be having a conversation about my still being there I I really did just think what an incredible thing to get to walk into this building to stand inside of these studios that I've watched on TV for so long uh, and if this is my only day here then awesome I got to spend the day here you know with him and so I left and, and didn't hear anything for weeks and when I did it was hey there's just a couple of people still in the running and you're one of them and I was like what in the world yeah. and sure enough like by that fall 
they had chosen me and 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 Grant and I were off to New York to film these commercials for inside stuff coming back and I it, it really all it felt so surreal um and that that was a one day a week uh, role at that point. I signed on for one season, one day a week, Saturday morning. And uh, by the yeah. end of that season, yeah, by the end of that season, I um, signed with Turner full time and started the next season, you know, hosting other shows and, and, and sideline reporting on TNT. And, and now again, here we are all of a decade later having this Incredible. conversation. Incredible. Congratulations on all your success. Uh, I've been a fan, you know, and like I said, when you saw me, I looked different. This is the pandemic hair. Usually it's buzz cut short and uh, I don't I didn't, the beard is relatively oh, new. And I don't to go back. I, yeah. yeah. I birthed a child during the pandemic. There is no one who has got <laughs> who looks as significantly different pre and post pandemic than I do. Fear no, not. I, there is no I judgment think, here. I think yeah. you look exactly the same. I mean, you you have you are on TV sometimes, uh, and and you know I saw your brief moment before we started. You look, you look exactly the same. So stop beating yourself. Up. Oh, I thank you for saying that. It, I think it's just that everything feels so different. So. It's like, yeah, how can I possibly be sitting in that same chair feeling like everything has changed and yet it doesn't read, you know? So thank you yeah. so much for that. It's been of such course. a sweet season, you know, to watch arenas fill back up because I was, you know, I was on maternity leave this time last year. And, and so to watch arenas fill back up while I was spending these quiet, well, I was about to say quiet, long days at home, but I guess they're sometimes very loud. Uh, long days at home thinking basketball <laughs> may or may not exist in the same fashion on the other side of all of this. And so to watch the arenas come back to life and to get to be back inside of our studio and ultimately uh, to, to, to one day, you know, we'll see, uh, cover games again. I, I'll be actually at the finals. We're going to do NBA TV pre and post game shows uh, from the finals. And I know just, just sitting in that space again, knowing how much has changed, but seeing the joy that the game still brings to so many thousands of people when we thought mm -hmm. for a brief moment there that it may not again. Um, it's just an incredible thing and feels like and a absolutely. gift in every way. Absolutely. And, and I'm excited to continue watching you on TV. Everyone can. Uh, any predictions for the Western Conference Finals? Do you see the Warriors going to the finals when you're uh, going to be covering it? Oh, yes, I do. Uh, I think that... Well, I don't want to underestimate the Mavs because I've done that for two rounds in a row now. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. But I, 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 you know what? This is a Warriors centric audience that's listening, right? Why not? Warriors in five. Bam. That's my prediction. So we're on the same page. I love yeah. it. And again, you can follow <laughs> Kristen Ledlow on, on Twitter at Kristen Ledlow. And you can watch her again on, on NBA TV. Uh, at some point soon, I'm guessing we're going to see you more often on NBA on TNT again. You're sorely missed. Kristen, thank you so much. It, it, this has been a pleasure. And, you know, coming from someone who's a fan of yours, thank you. It's This has been a joy. And the, uh, this, this I, I'm a fan of yours as well. Thank you so much for taking the time and for being so patient as I had to uh, work this around. You're a one-year-old is actually more difficult to schedule than work. So thank you. <laughs> it's a job. though. No, that's the hardest job you have. I don't doubt that for a second. Kristen, thank, thank you to everyone. Take care, everyone. Later.